Hey guys, it's Bryce and Aaron with another Fusion 360 update. We have a few things to show. Let's just jump right in. It is with much excitement that we get to announce the release of Sheet Metal and Fusion 360. This is yet another delivery on an idea station request, which is a bit of an understatement. This idea garnered almost 700 votes and almost 20,000 views, making it the number one idea by far. To get started, don't worry about digging into those preferences to turn on a preview, because we took this from a limited preview directly to production. Thanks to the real world testing those in the limited preview performed, all you need to do to start designing those sheet metal parts is to access the new workspace. When you're here, you can start in a couple of different ways, but it all starts from the high powered flange tool. Trigger warning, you'll be hearing the word flange about 50 times in the next minute. Anyway, if your sketch is a closed profile, the flange tool will make a base flange. If your sketch is an open profile, it's a contour flange. Which Fusion 360 will apply appropriate bends, thicknesses, and other rules that you apply. So make sure to populate these with accurate information pertaining to the different stock that you have access to. Make sure to specify important details, like K-factor and relief. As expected, if you change the rules for a design, all the details will update to reflect the new information. But I'm going to undo that last change. If you want to add materials and bends, grab the flange tool once again. You can add new contours from sketches, just make sure to select the sketch, then edge, and you'll notice that mine are automatically, but you can try much more complex contours. To add an edge flange, you guessed it, the flange tool and edge selection will do the trick. While in this flange tool, make sure to dig around into the options to adjust the height, bend position, width, which has tons of flexibility, and of course the angle. Adding those vents to your sheet metal parts got a lot easier, now that we can take advantage of a couple new sketch tools. Both the three point arc slot, demonstrated here quickly, and the center point arc slot will enable complex sketch creation faster than ever before. Here I'll make a quarter of the vent and warp speed that can be patterned later. Positioning the slot from the front edge used to require additional sketch lines and constraints, but now that we have a new tangent dimension, we don't need to do that anymore. All I need to do is grab my dimension tool, select the edge, then right mouse click on the arc or circle to designate what I want to dimension to. And before I select the arc, it'll designate where the dimension will go with the black X. And here's the finished vent. Back to the front part, I'll unfold this in the timeline for two reasons to verify collisions and or overlap isn't occurring, which can be quite common with sheet metal parts. But in this case, I'll do it to ensure any cuts are normal to the thickness. When all is said and done, click the intuitive refold button to inspect the last change. And you can see how complex those normal cuts get when they cross a bend. The flat pattern is ready to go, so I'll send it over to Bryce for some drawing creation. Well, now that Aaron is done with the design of our sheet metal component, let's create a drawing. First, we need to create a flat pattern of this sheet metal component. The flat pattern is different from unfolding because it takes an account of the K factor for the length of the flattened part as it stretches. Let's create a flat pattern by using the command in the modify dropdown. Once the component is flattened, we get a representation of the bend lines on the component. In addition, in the browser, there is now a folder for the bend center lines and extent lines. To get back in the folded state, simply click the exit flat command. If you ever need to examine the flat while you're designing, activate the flat pattern out of the browser. Straight from the flat pattern, we can create a new drawing. Notice, since I'm viewing the flat, the drawing will default to using the flat pattern representation. Once we get to the drawing, we get the same options to change scale, visual style, and more. But let's create a bend table. Rather than creating a new table command for bend tables, we improve the current table command to be intelligent. The table command will switch between a parts list and a bend table, depending on whether a flat sheet metal pattern or an assembly is on the sheet. Next, we will add some bend identifiers, which are associated to the bend table. We can activate the bend identifier command and simply click on the bend lines to add the bend identifier. If the automatic placement lands in an inconvenient spot, as it did with this bend identifier, we can click and drag it out of the way and Fusion 360 will automatically add a leader pointing to the bend. Finally, we will end this drawing with a couple of enhancements that apply to all drawings, not just sheet metal drawings. First, let's create a chain dimension to show where the holes on these flanges are located. 
In the Dimension tool, you can quickly chain dimensions together by selecting the extension line of an existing dimension. Now that we have all these dimensions lined up, I realized that I did not leave myself enough space to add some dimensions below these ones. Now I can box select the group of dimensions, click one of the drag handles and drag them all up at the same time. This will save me from having to do this one dimension at a time. Lastly, we will create a dimension for this bend. Notice how the dimension leader lines cross over the other dimensions extension lines. Currently, this looks cluttered and can become confusing as we add more dimensions. Now we can right click on the dimension and select Add Dimension Break to break this dimension's line. Now that looks a lot cleaner. Hi everyone, Lars Christensen here. I am super excited about the new sheet metal function in Fusion 360. Now, I just want to remind you that not only can Fusion 360 now fold and bend with K-Factor and create 2D work drawings for the shop floor, Fusion 360 can actually take you all the way to the finished part. From within the CAM environment, we can flatten the part and with the cutting tool path for laser, water jet and plasma, we can etch the bend lines and of course cut the entire shape. And what about post processors? Well, besides the ones in your default install of Fusion 360, you will find all the industry leading machines on the online post library site, free of charge, letting you design and make anything. So, no excuses, bend, flatten and cut your next design. So with that, back to Bryce and Aaron. Another exciting development is coming to our offline experience. Now, due to selective cache, the second of three phases to make the offline experience as seamless as possible, you can designate which projects, folders, or designs you want to cache. While these are being cached, you can monitor its progress by checking the job status area. And with all this caching you'll probably be doing, it gets important to know what's cached and what's not. That's why we've added this View Offline Cache option, which will gray out files that aren't local as if you were offline. It's important to note that, as of today, this is a one-time cache and will not be automatically synced. But as I infer, automatic syncing is the next big step for this experience. Please also note that cache files, including those cached selectively, are cleared at the frequency you designate in your preferences. So make sure to adjust this to your liking, like I've done here. Next, in design and modeling, I have a couple great updates to report. Those of you who like to hide and show threads will be thrilled to know that you can do this for an entire design by accessing an option in the browser under Document Settings. There you'll be able to switch thread displays between modeled and cosmetic, improving performance or increasing realism, whichever you're going for. The next time you're using lofted surfaces in the patchwork space, you'll now have an option to control the continuity for profiles and rails independently. Here I'm going to make sure this bottom edge is smooth to the connecting face to ensure that G2 continuity. Another place rails have been improved is within the sweep tool. For those making sweeps with guide rails, You'll now find an extent option which allows those rails to follow the path either perpendicular or drive the location as a percentage. Here I'm going to press and pull both the path and the rails to show you the different effects. Well I know everyone out there is thrilled to be getting their hands on sheet metal. I know I am. And we just didn't bring sheet metal in this update. We brought tangent dimensions, arc slots, selective caching, and continuity on the rails and the loft tool. And that's not it because there's two previews dropping today as well. So make sure to check those out. Okay, this next update is pretty shocking. Well, it brings an eCAD to MCAD workflow in Fusion 360 with Eagle. This is a preview, so make sure to go to your preferences to enable the PCB feature. In this example, we're going to start by specifying the board shape within Fusion 360. We're going to create a sketch on this face and project in the edges to use for the board outline. With this new preview, you will now have a Create PCB feature. This will place a PCB feature in the timeline and throw you in the PCB environment. Notice the commands in the toolbar change. To start, let's select the PCB Profile command to specify the board shape. This command will let you select profiles, specify the board thickness, and the location of the PCB origin. Once you finish this command, a board will be created. Notice in the browser we get a board-specific component. Do notice that the PCB assembly component was activated to ensure the board falls in this assembly prior to the PCB feature. 
This is best practice to ensure the board and all the board components don't fall in the top level of the assembly. Finally, we will save this design. Now that the PCB is created within the Fusion design, let's hop over to Eagle. The Eagle schematic has already been completed, so when we switch to the board layout, we see the 2D footprints of the components used on the schematic. The electronic designer can use the Fusion Sync panel to start linking the current Eagle project to a Fusion 360 PCB design. Once the component is located and expanded, you will notice a PCB in the list. Note that you can have multiple printed circuit boards in a Fusion 360 design. Once the Eagle design is linked to a Fusion 360 PCB design, we can see that the PCB is out of sync. Now we can pull the board created in our Fusion 360 design. Notice that the board shape will update in Eagle to match the Fusion 360 design. Now the electronic designer can continue to lay out all the electronic components on the board. Once the board is complete in Eagle, the electronic designer can push the changes back to Fusion 360. These components on the PCB are connected to a 3D model using the managed libraries. To learn more about the process of setting up these managed libraries in Eagle with the 3D components, click the link in the description for more information. So let's switch back to Fusion 360. As the electronic designer was making changes to the board, the mechanical engineer was making changes to the enclosure. With Fusion 360, we can check for interferences with the board and the housing. We can edit the sketch of the PCB profile and apply a 50 thousandths offset from the new flanges. Next, let's select and edit the PCB feature in the timeline. To update the new board shape, select the PCB profile command and deselect the new offset sketch contours. In addition, we have a collision with the connectors. Let's use the Move PCB Components command to translate the two connectors to a better location. Now that we have updated the board shape and components to fit within the new mechanical enclosure, we can notify the rest of the team using red lines within Fusion Team. But this isn't where it stops. We can take this design to rendering, simulation, animation, and the CAM environments to extend our design process. All right, I have one last big update for you this month. Today, you can access a preview of Fusion 360 in a browser. First, log into Fusion Team and browse to a project. You can either create a new Fusion 360 design or edit an existing Fusion 360 design in a browser. Now, whether you are on the desktop or in the browser, you will have access to the same sketch, feature, and design information. Yeah, that's right. You can start accessing your Fusion 360 data on Linux machines and Chromebooks. There is no download or install. You'll have access to your Fusion 360 data, whether you are working online, offline, or on the go. To learn more about Fusion 360 in a browser, click the link in the description. Today, it supports sketching and part modeling. But as you begin to explore its capabilities, make sure to let us know how you'd like to see it change by submitting suggestions to the Idea Station. As you might have just seen on Bryce's video just now, the number one Idea Station request was sheet metal, but we delivered on that. We're looking for more great ideas. Yeah, and we just got two previews in your hands. Get on the forums, give us your feedback. We're super excited. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.